presenting the uh, this paper, motivating the learning of science topics in secondary school. The construction is entertainment setting for studying chaos. And the um, aim of this paper was this fancy sentence, which basically was using a multimedia learning by doing-ish things to engage students that previously didn't know anything about the topic. So the topic was chaos theory, which is uh, well, it's a study of mathematics where uh, systems of behaviors are really sensitive to the initial conditions. So one tiny thing in the beginning can change the entire outcome, if you would want to say it. And uh, students were going to learn about this and the Jewish circuit, which is this electronic circuit that uh, displays the behavior of chaos. So, in this paper, they had uh, two different uh, groups of people in secondary school, high school, and uh, one experimental group, back in a control group, each with 30 people in. And 50-50 uh, girls, boys. Mm. And they uh, try to keep the conditions as similar as possible. And all the students were comfortable with technology. It did not affect their grades. And uh, there was no statistical uh, significance between these groups of people uh, with regards to age and uh, gender. So this is the uh, setup for the entire experiment. It was uh, based in the three stages. And uh, for the experimental group, the first stage was uh, an initial assessment where they, well, they quizzed the students what they knew about chaos theory to begin with. <coughs> and afterwards, they were split. Uh, well, just the experimental group was split into six new groups where they had to build their own Jewish uh, circuit board and they connected it to, to a computer and um, they sort of they played with the various simulation software and uh, played with changing small parameters to see the changes. I think some of the programs they uh, converted some of the data into 3D images, sounds, uh, music, etc. And for the second stage the experimental group uh, made this virtual theater where they had to write a script um, explaining chaos theory or the uh, history of the Chua circuit. Um, they don't really mention why they chose this, but I suppose it's to uh, uh, write down and reflect upon what they learned at the first stage, probably. And uh, they used uh, 3D program with pre-rigged heads that they could uh, manipulate and uh, sync the audio they recorded to make some sort of virtual play. Anyway. And at the end, they took this uh, a new questionnaire that was similar to the initial one, but a bit different, just to see how much they had learned and a test of uh, their motivation. And they could write down their own uh, experience and, uh, and uh, the control group they did well it was almost the same thing they had the same type of assessment but um, they only had traditional lessons with textbooks and just still images and uh, no multimedia or anything so uh, for the results of uh, this study they used several tests the man Whitney u test was used uh, to compare the groups and uh, they used uh, some other types of tests to, um, uh, to not get any error in the results. And they also paid a lot of attention to the relation between the uh, results of the tests and the motivation that the students uh, had. So. They got a lot of uh, results. Mm. In the pretest, there was no significant difference between the uh, groups. I think that it was 1.2 and 
1.8 for uh, the group, so it was not a big difference there. But the, um, the post-test results were had actually quite a significant uh, difference. Uh, what well, they had out of 15, the experimental group got a 13.6 uh, score, while the uh, control group had 11.5. So it was a bit of a difference there. And uh, this next figure shows a bit of a more nuance to it because the control group was much more spread for they some had got worse scores and some got better, but the uh, experimental group really gathered up in the high scores. So that's interesting. Um, so they were pretty interested in finding the relationship between motivation and learning. Um, and the researchers, they so they found a significant correlation between motivation and post-test scores. And they even called uh, motivation test scores a predictor of learning outcome. Which, um, let's see. And uh, they also said that interest and enjoyment uh, seems to play uh, into the post-test uh, results. Yep, they had this uh, interesting um, <laughs> figure that um, couldn't make com a complete sense of it, but uh, it, uh, because I know when I watched, uh, I read through it, and I wanted to find out which uh, uh, group had the highest uh, uh, motivation. Um, they didn't really mention this. But um, yeah. they said that the uh, experimental group, uh, for them, the motivation score, it really predicted the chaos test score in the end. And for the uh, control group, it was more the uh, sense of effort and importance that really affected the, uh, the learning test results. So they had quite a lot of uh, data to process there. Yeah. But, um, so. And they also had a lot included uh, some qualitative data because the students, they could write down uh, their uh, experience, good and bad. And um, it seemed like the experimental group really liked it. They had, yeah, they said some of these things that they enjoyed it, got a lot of information, they played as they usually do with video games. Funny, engaging. The only thing that they complained about was this 3D program, so they had a few choices of actors, and so it's nothing really important. And the first stage they didn't complain about at all. So they were very enthusiastic. But the control group, were, well, they were not very happy. They had no interest. It was hard, too long. And, and half of the control group said that it was interesting, and only five said they felt engaged. And four, only four wanted to participate in something similar like this uh, later on. So they didn't seem to like it as much. But mm, apart from this, I think that, well, it seemed like they had a pretty strong methodology. They had uh, thought about a lot of things. They uh, wanted to test all their subjects and um, see if there was any difference between the groups. And they tested the results to uh, get any error. And, um, yeah, they, they seem to know a little bit what they were doing, at least. Um, but, well, it was pretty well referenced, but 
the first part was really <laughs> difficult to read, and it was I don't know if it's me being nitpicky, but the uh, intro was really maybe they could have used that numbers for a citation or something. But everyone has their own style. Um, so since this is a game course, mm. was this any? Did they play any game? <laughs> No, not really, not at all. But uh, but they do talk a lot about things that are mm, used a lot in game they, about motivation and um, engagement. So they did use the word edutainment, which is yeah. more appropriate than fiction. Yes, game. Mm, I think so. Mm. And uh, they only mention games. Well, they cite some game video game articles and. Uh, Apart from the student saying that it was like the guy was playing a video game or something, it's never mentioned. So, but it, I suppose it can be useful for um, people who want to make games for education, uh, just to see if, how um, um, motivation can affect results. But um, I still wonder if it would last. Because uh, I'm kind of skeptical about the uh, uh, higher results from the other group because mm. it could be um, just because it was something new. Maybe they wouldn't be as uh, motivated if they had to do the same type of thing uh, every week. If they had to write these, for example, scripts and make virtual theatre every few weeks, maybe it wouldn't be as fun. Maybe it would lose its novelty, and uh, it also didn't really explain why they used some of the things they used, like um, this uh, virtual theater. There was no educational explanation to it. it. Didn't seem like they included any teachers. So mm, I would like to see some teachers involved, uh, have some s more explanation based on that, maybe. Um, they only mention uh, teachers when they criticize school systems. So, but uh, so for the future, I would like to see some more um, involvement, perhaps, of teachers. And they could try, well, I would see, like to see it with the other um, subjects, like stuff they are already supposed to learn. Maybe this was too hard for them to learn. I don't know. Um, or it could be interesting to see whether maybe a bigger sample of people or uh, more variation. Maybe they could see some interesting patterns and results. But overall, it was it was an interesting article with a lot of data and. But they don't really make any big uh, conclusions. It's more hinting that it seems like motivation is. Uh, an important key to you know, helping students. And so it was interesting. Mm -hmm. That's uh, all I had to say about it, really. All right. So how, yeah. how did they select the control group, did they say? I don't think they said how they chose them. No. They just said that they had like, yeah. similar characteristics. Yeah, but yeah. because they well, they tried to make uh, well, find people that were as similar as possible, but it didn't. They didn't mention any of the, yeah. how they selected them or the process of that. It was more yeah, we chose secondary uh, school students and that was it. Yeah, because there mm -hmm. is a risk of self-selecting selecting group. Um, yeah. So if they say, oh, who wants to play with the computers and who yeah. wants to be in the classroom? Uh, if they did that, then the results might be biased because of the self-selection of, mm. the, of the control group versus the experimental group. Yeah. So I was quite, um, I, I didn't like that they didn't say it or they mm. haven't used the random assignment. So they probably could take two classes of students and randomly assign them to one or the other group. Um, 
So the, I didn't like that, and I didn't mm -hmm. like the fact that they didn't do the motivation thing before, neither. So they only have done post-experimental analysis of the motivation, mm -hmm. and they showed that the video game kind of uh, group was more motivated, mm -hmm. but they haven't did they haven't done it before the experiments. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to tell how motivated students were to come to start with, whether mm -hmm. the yeah, you could get some students that were like really tired of school or something, and yeah, they would exactly. drag the entire thing down. And so, well, they don't mention much about the students other than uh, age, gender. Yeah, so that was a little bit. Um, it mm -hmm. could have been better. That's true. Yeah, another thing which was a little bit interesting to me was the they have statistics on pre questionnaire and post questionnaire. And in mm. the pre-questionnaire, the scale seems to be around 1, the mean mm. of the questionnaire. And in the post-questionnaire, yeah, the means are like 12, 11, 14. So the scales are different. Those are kind of a different metrics. And it's a little bit tricky to say, to, to compare the metrics as well. So mm. the, it would have been easier if it was normalized somehow. Um, because it seems like in the control group, the boys were weaker than the girls yes. before the experiment, and then after the experiment, they leveled up. Whereas in the experiment group, the boys were better than girls, but after the experiment, the girls were better than boys. And yeah, how, what, what does that mean? And also, mm -hmm. the difference between the control group girls and the experiment girls is quite big. It's like twice in the pre-tests, right? Yes. So if the girls were if the girls were twice as good to start with, but then they were weaker at the end, these girls did extremely well by yeah. comparison, right? So mm -hmm. that was sort of interesting. They haven't explored why that happened. Yeah, they didn't really write much about it. No. I, th I think they said something that it wasn't much of a difference between gender, but then they probably just... Yeah. Uh. So to me, there is quite a big difference because the girls in the control group were sort of seems twice as good as the girls in the experiment group. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the experiment, the girls did extremely well. They were the best, like 14.3. Right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I wasn't sure what those numbers meant. There was, a, well, quite a lot of data and numbers they had, mm. and um, so some of the conclusions are a bit vague. Yeah, that's right. So. But apart from that, yeah, it was quite well structured and. Mm. Uh, I, it, it was quite interesting, and the focus on motivation was also interesting. So they didn't focus yeah. on the actual results of effectiveness, mm -hmm. yeah. mo mostly on the motivation. But did you see anywhere which group actually had the highest motivation? No. Because <laughs> it, it isn't... It isn't no. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, I tried to interpret right. it, but uh, it only confused me. That's right. Uh, so. I thought this would be int I thought it would be interesting, you know, well, wouldn't you want to know since you <laughs> we're comparing these two groups? That's right. So, yes, I would search and search and would So, yeah, mm. it's the same with me. I couldn't understand this graph totally. Mm. The the only thing which I got from that graph was that in the experiment group the difference between boys and girls was almost none whereas with the Yeah control group there were some differences, yes. and small I, differences. Yeah, so, and I didn't find the uh, figure to uh, match up, uh, what was it, this figure, I didn't find it to match up with uh, what I read. What they say. No, That's right, because, yeah. uh, what I, the scale, the, one is motivation, yes. so and, yeah, motivation, and this says the control group has more motivation. Exactly. Than the That's yes, right. and that yeah. didn't, you know, that didn't really, uh, <laughs> work with any of the things they were saying. So I don't know, maybe it's the sum of all of that or no. Yeah, I I couldn't get it. Okay. And it wasn't just me. Mm. Yeah. So it was interesting at least. Mm. Yeah. Mm.
Yeah, compared to some other education setups which we read last week about, this one had a definite path where the traditional lessons were substituted with the edutainment session. So that that was sort of a clear. And they were, uh, as, as far as they were writing at least, they were trying to make sure that the two groups had the same resources available. So they had both six hours mm -hmm. for either doing the practical work or going to lectures. So at least they were trying to have the same efforts and, and input side and measure the difference. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can you go on? Uh, can you display the fronter, fronter page with the question, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Um. <laughs> Yes, so the first question got quite a, quite a popular vote. What were the differences in learning outcome between the experimental group and the control group? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. <laughs> Uh, they did collected some questionnaire um, data, but it's actually not possible to answer that question uh, from mm -hmm. the article, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good question, but it points more of a weakness in the article than <laughs> we can answer it, I think. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of traditional learning methods compared to the more interactive learning methods described in the paper. So what do you think? Traditional learning, well, I'm imagining it to be just yeah, traditional teacher lecture. It could probably get boring easily for students, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but the interactive learning, it's uh, I suppose it's hard to keep people and get engaged for long and uh, uh, keep it fun and, and actually learning yeah, the, the same things you are supposed to learn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, the interactive learning methods, yeah, it's pretty new so it's really hard to, I would really like to see someone doing this for a longer period of time to see if it actually holds up. Because it, I mean, everyone likes doing new things, so you would probably... But if that becomes the normal way of working, yeah, then and it's probably not as exciting as it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everything can become a chore. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's also a little bit difficult to, to clearly identify what interactive learning is. So I was in my mm -hmm. daughter class uh, a few weeks ago and the teacher was using the um, the projector with the interactive board and she asked students to actually come to the, t to the whiteboard and, and write things, write answers. So that was kind of interactive, they had to pay attention and when they came they had to drag things down and, and play with the, with the display and mm -hmm. with the board and it wasn't really using the uh, video kind of technology, the traditional video game technology, but it was more interactive than the teacher standing there and just talking. Uh, so the, the boundaries are getting a little bit blurred, uh, so that the students get engaged, they have to do certain things, and I think it, the main point here is that you, you're trying to tap an appeal to different learning styles. So mm -hmm. some people prefer sitting passively and, and listening, but some people prefer tinkering and, and trying things out. And in this particular case of the chaos theory, being able to manipulate initial conditions and being able to see what happens by doing mm -hmm. stuff 
may appeal to some students much more than having a lecture or having some uh, more passive. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So for some for some visual learners or kind of those uh, interactive uh, styles, seeing something and having the simulations might be much more appealing. Um, so then we have question number three, which was interestingly identical to question number five. Um, so we we had a little discussion with. Um, with Runa, what to do with p possible clashes, and what do you think in the game? How those situations should be handled if two students independently ask kind of identical question? Well, if you combine it and both students get the points for yeah, but. They could share the points. <laughs> <laughs> should, should you get the penalty? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, splitting exactly. the points. Yeah. So if, if they share the points, if they have to split the points, I mean, there is a bit of a penalty because yeah. each of them gets less points, right? Uh, so you had to give them both the full amount of points. Seems fair. Seems fair, yeah. So we, we thought that's probably the, the fairest out mm. yeah, solution. Yeah. So the question gets combined, and then both students get the same amount of points, which was for that question. The side effect, which uh, Rune noticed, is that normally we had five questions, but yeah. now if we combine it, we only have four. Therefore, there is fewer questions. Fewer your points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have fewer points as well. So you can have, you say that the average two per question, then if you have three rather than four questions, Gives you six points to award rather than eight points. Yeah, yeah, that's Maybe right. The, the the rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're not allowed to vote on your own question. So, in yeah. a sense, there there will so be. Now you have two people not allowed to vote on the same question. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. More for us. Yeah. So th yeah, there is a bit of a dynamic. Uh, we would have to model it. We would have to sort of um, check how, how it works. Yeah. But the question was, what are the stages included in the research for the experimental group, and what do the different stages contain? It's, it's a combined questions of those two questions, but they were worded slightly differently. But mm. So one suggested that there were three stages, and one question didn't suggest that there were three stages. So I picked the option without suggesting three stages. Yeah. So what were the three stages? I think you pick the first part of one the other. Yeah. three stages of that for the first stage was to be in the Mm -hmm. And the second part was part of the research. And uh, the third stage was uh, using uh, the knowledge they gained from the earlier uh, stages and the appropriate test. Mm -hmm. Yep. No. Yeah, there is there is another side effect. So we I was teaching a programming course and we had labs and we had lectures. 
So on the lectures, we were talking theory a little bit about object-oriented programming and so on. In the labs, the students were programming, co coding stuff. And then we had um, an exam. An exam was only written part. So you actually have to describe what, what you were doing. We also had tests. And in the test, you only have to write code. right? So it was kind of interesting that people who were really good in writing code and doing the assessment by writing code usually were quite unable to explain what they were doing in English. So they could write the proper code, and it would be much better than the other group. But if they had an exam question to describe how to do that in English, they couldn't write properly how to do that. <laughs> they could write the code in Java, but they couldn't write it in English. And the other way around as well. So the students who wrote excellent exams and they described in English how they would write this method were unable to, to write it in Java. Right? So here they assess the students who were doing the, uh, the playing thing the same way as the students who were listening the, the theory. So the practical sort of aspects and the theory aspects were assessed the same way. I was wondering whether by assessing both groups both ways, they would get different results. So for example, letting the students who only had lecture play with the boards now and, and do certain tasks with the boards, how they would do that compared to the students who played with the boards, and then yeah, kind of do the cross examinations of both of those styles. Because we, we observed it like we haven't scientifically proved it. But over the course of three years, it was continuously the same thing, uh, that students who were pretty good coders were not that good coming up with the exam uh, answers, uh, which yeah, was a bit of an issue. OK, so the final question was, both quantitative and qualitative data have been collected, but quantitative data was more helpful. Why? Quantitative well, data was just what the students had said mm -hmm. themselves, how they felt like. And it's not, you, you can't really extract any data from it. It's That's the not, way that uh, was designed. It was designed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so qu qu qualitative studies have certain structure and they have follow certain methodology, which th it wasn't the case here. Yeah. So the qualitative data collected was mm -hmm. not supposed to be meaningful. It was mm -hmm. just kind of indicative, maybe. It was but more, yeah, it was going to be used for the data. Yeah, that's right. Um, it was more like a... Some, some, just an extra little nuance to the entire thing, how they reported, but no real use. Any other questions about or reflections on the on those two articles? All right. So next week we have um, taxonomies. So we will not be asking students to prepare anything. It will be Costas and myself probably uh, talking about the taxonomies we have. You still read the three articles which are posted and ask questions about the articles. Um, I'm not sure what we should do with the answers, um, with the system for answering questions and ju voting on that. Should I post it on Frontier? Like if we had the system, it would sort of be embedded, but we still don't have the system. <laughs> so <laughs> I was a little bit not sure what to do with it. I was hoping to get the system going, but yeah, I got a little bit stuck with the with the backend. Yeah. So I could what I can do is I can post answers anonymously of the previous two lectures on Frontier. And same as with the questions, you can email me the the points for the answers. And I can attach the points to the answers. Maybe that's the the easiest way to do it. As long as we get them uh, before uh, the late night before the lecture. <laughs> 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 we'll take it, yes. That's true. So yeah. the, the answers for these questions can come you know, after today. We passed the deadline because I was late, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, let's do that. So I will post the answers for the last week on Frontier, and then you email me the answers for this week, and I will post them on Frontier as well, and then you just do the voting before the next Tuesday. 
on. Yeah. So, so what will happen now? And I think that uh, I think it's uh, definitely important that we choose project for the next time. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to happen now is that uh, the papers that we're going to be presenting will be papers that come out partly because of your choices. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we need to know a little bit about the direction, and what we will be uh, doing is let you suggest papers that you think were good or bad, or somehow papers that address something that you would like to uh, like to discuss and address. And uh, you send a few links, not too many, easy four maybe. And then we choose the ones that we think are, uh, are better. So you give us uh, an option to choose among the ones you have. So it would be good if you can already, until next week, start collecting some uh, references, mm -hmm. papers, references that are relevant to your work. Because the project is scientific work, which means that we should base your work on the art. So getting into finding what is relevant literature, and if you find one or two papers that you find interesting, then just tell us, um, and we can choose ones for the week after next week. Yep. Um, eventually, we'll all need to, but I think that we don't need to have all the suggestions over the next week. But if some of you already can come across some papers, then it would be a good idea to send them in, and, and we can pick. For a week after. I don't know how many paper, papers we'll have time to look up, seeing as we have a deadline that's so close that we need to finish. This week. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> see, I don't know. But, but I mean, scientific so work, yeah. you would like to do some of the basic studying abroad, but as an excuse, the actor yeah. <laughs> for it. So, so whatever you can do, uh, it does make sense to do a just a short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, you can you can do a very full study. Mm -hmm. You can do a little bit. So At least some so background. You, yeah. So just you make sure that you aren't drifting far off from what could be a recommended way. Of different ways. But but absolutely, yeah. We, I mean, <coughs> Uh, we're saying you, you should write anyway, uh, not just yeah, what you do, but also the reflection afterwards. Mm -hmm. In that reflection part, you do much more of the study and compare your approach to other approaches. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. it's good to, 